So, um, well, I think the summer is here early, and as mentioned by uh, our ceremony man earlier, the Ray, you know, we have strange uh, pattern, the weather pattern across the uh, the globe. You know, some areas are freezing cold, some areas are, you know, very warm and hot, you know, which is quite unusual. And, uh, you know, the effect of this is eventually uh, food pattern. <laughs> food. You know, it will affect uh, the, uh, the, the, the crops, the production of crops, you know, uh, seriously across the globe. You know, so um, as the Bible prophesy that there will be a time of great uh, famine and pestilences that is yet to come. You know, so these are the precursors, you know, of the prophetic uh, things that we, you know, uh, we have read from the scripture, and they are, you know, uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, before our eyes we can actually see them. Okay, and uh, this uh, weather change, this, uh, you know. Uh, well, brought about most probably the, uh, you know, the plagues that we actually read, you know, in the book of Revelation. Okay, but that's not my subject today, but if you want me to speak about that, I can do that. But I think we have more important subject in uh, this afternoon. Uh, I would like you to turn to your Bible to John, the 14th chapter. You know, 14th chapter of John is very interesting. Actually, it's 14 to 17. I would suggest that you read them as a whole. Because this is the, uh, uh, the night of uh, the betrayal of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This involves basically the Last Supper. So these three books, uh, John 14, 15, 16, and 17, revolves around one particular night. These are the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed. These events, these four, actually four uh, chapters, three chapters are his discourse with the disciples, and one chapter, John the 17th, is his prayer to the Heavenly Father. Okay, so all of these things happened at the night <coughs> that he was betrayed. To a lot of people, they call it the last dinner or supper. Okay. So, in John the fourth, chapter 14, Jesus Christ told the 12 disciples, and he says, a very truly, uh, 12, verse 12, okay, Jesus said, can, I, can you go to the NIV? Okay, NIV, I use the NIV. <clears throat> NIV means uh, New International Version. That's NIV? Yeah, she said, I tell you the truth. Okay, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. So when you break down this particular verse okay. and we have read this verse many times and quite often in the past but I don't think we have fully understood what this verse is all about so when we break this down in this verse down they're basically talking about three things one is anyone who has faith in me so he is talking to whoever believes to the Believers. Okay? That's one. And second is that that believer will do what I have been doing. Second point. And the third point is that he said, he, the believer, will do even greater things than this. Than what he, Jesus Christ, has been doing. So basically, you're talking about three things here. You know? The believer of Christ will continue to do God's work, the work of Christ on earth, and we will do, or the believers will do greater things, things greater, bigger, you know, than Jesus Christ himself did during his three and a half years ministry. Okay. So who are the believers? So definitely we are 
the believers, the true disciples of Christ. Okay? So, <clears throat> the question is, what did Jesus do when He was on earth? Okay? The ministry of Jesus is about the gospel of the kingdom of God. Because Jesus Christ came, He brought a message from the Father. Yet, the work that Jesus Christ started has not yet ended. It did not end with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This work continued after the departure and ascension of our Lord and Savior. You know, on the very night before His crucifixion, Jesus reminded the disciples of the work. And that is what we read in John chapter 14. Is that if you believe, okay, you will do what I have been doing. And you were then you will do even greater things. So after his resurrection from the dead, Jesus taught the disciples for 40 days, okay, about the kingdom of God, you know, in preparation of the preaching of the gospel to be brought forth by the apostles. And eventually prior to his ascension, he gave this particular command to his disciples. And, in, and we can read this in Matthew chapter 28. And starting from verse 16, Matthew the 28 chapter. And a lot of people know this as the command. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus has told them to go. Okay, continue. So when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay, continue. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Continue, verse 20. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, until everything is accomplished. Okay, so, the believers, those who believe in Jesus Christ, will do the work that Jesus Christ has been doing. Okay, so what is the work of Jesus Christ? It is the preaching of the gospel, you know, and this gospel has to be preached unto the ends of the earth. And that is the work of the followers, the believers of Christ. Then the next verse, uh, the next item on the verse, the third one is that they will do even greater things. Right? We have read that. Okay. Jesus said the disciples will do greater things than he did. And this you know, is very true. The disciples collectively performed far greater miracles than those performed by Jesus Christ. Okay. So we can go to Acts chapter 15 and in verse 12 we will read, he said, the whole assembly became silent as they listened to uh, Acts chapter 5 to 15. Acts chapter 5 verse 12. Acts chapter 5 in verse 12. See, the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in the Solomon's Colonnade. So Solomon's Colonnade is a portion of the temple in uh, Israel. At that time in Jerusalem. Okay? So in the temple, this is the Solomon's Colonnade. This is the outer court. Okay? Wherein people actually gather uh, for learnings and teachings and for fellowshipping. And they were there. You know, quite often. And from there, at the temple, they perform many miracles, the apostles. Okay. And the miracles that these disciples performed were actually greater than those performed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ said so, that they will be able to perform greater miracles. And that is true, and it actually came to pass. Even the sh shadow 
of Peter heals. Can you imagine that? The shadow of Peter. You know, Jesus would touch you know, a person and the person would be healed or come back to life. But in this particular case, Peter, he doesn't have to touch anyone. He just have to pass by, cast the shadow, and the person will be healed. And we can read this uh, in Acts chapter 5, same chapter, Acts chapter 5, and in verse 15. Okay. As a result, okay, because they were perform, performing many miracles at the temple area called the Solomon's Colonnade, as a result of those miracles, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at Peter, at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Verse 16. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Okay. So it's a greater miracle. Than <clears throat> those performed by Jesus. It's only because they have the Holy Spirit sent by the Father. Now, with regard to the power of the preaching, Jesus Christ at one time had 500 disciples. But on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were baptized on a single day. Right? This is the power of the preaching of the apostles. And the church eventually grew to 5,000 at, you know, on the onset. And the gospel actually spread across the entire Roman Empire. The work of Christ continues today through His people, through His disciples. Okay? The preaching of the gospel didn't end with the apostles. It continues today and it will continue until the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns. Now, to do the work, you need workers. You know, and you need to train the workers. So this, the disciples were all called by Christ, not only the twelve, but you know, a few hundred of them. And they were trained. They were called and they were trained by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 9, in verse 35. Here we read that Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in synagogues, Preaching the good news of the kingdom of God and healing every disease and sickness. Okay, so Jesus Christ, you know, was doing his work, the work that was assigned to him by the Father. He went from town to town, village to village, church to church, synagogue to synagogue, preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. Okay, and of course, when he's there, he would perform miracles. Verse 36. He said, So when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 37. Then he said to his disciples, he said, the harvest is plenty, okay, but the workers are few. Okay. Workers are few. You know? The harvest can be a lot. The harvest is plentiful. We can harvest a lot of people, Jesus Christ said. We can save a lot of souls. But the workers are limited, are few. Continue. He said, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And then he called the twelve. So he said, hey, you know, 
Call the Lord of the harvest and save out more people into the fields to do the harvest. Verse 39. He said, He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority. Wow. Okay. To drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So Jesus Christ empowered the disciples. Okay. And in this particular case, he called only 12 to go out you know, to preach at the same time to heal. Okay. Because the, heal, the healing gives power to the preaching. Continue. He said, these are the names of the 12 apostles. First, you have Simon, who is called Peter. Then his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simeon, uh, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instruction. Okay, he said, Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. He said, hey, don't, don't go too far. Just stay within the house of Israel. Okay? Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. So, Israeli ta lang. So, mga, uh, mga Hujiu lang. Yung mga Samaritans, yung mga Hintil, wag na. Okay? Just go to the lost sheep of Israel. He said, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of God is near. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is near. Verse 7. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out the demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So he called the twelve and sent them out. You know, to perform miracles, to drive out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, and preach the gospel. Okay. So there are more people now actually preaching the word. Now let's go to Luke chapter 10. Yeah. After sending out the first wave of the 12 apostles, Jesus sent out a second wave. Okay? Jesus sent out a second wave. Okay. Maybe just for context, let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. This is the parallel account to Matthew chapter 10. It said, when Jesus has called the twelve together, He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So this was the first wave. Okay? And then now let's go to Luke chapter 10. Let's go to Luke chapter 10 now. Okay? And verse 1. After this, so after the first wave, Jesus sent out the second wave. Okay? After this, the Lord appointed 72 others, right? And send them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. You know, so he organized this. The first time he sent out the twelve, you know, with power to heal, you know, to empower the message of the kingdom of God. You know, and after that, he sent out the 72. Now he has a travel plan, Right? So he would send the 72 in pairs, you know, to the town, to the village, you know, prior to his arrival. So that's what he said. So after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Okay? We will read the entire chapter. He said, then he told them, he said, the harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. 
Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves, he said. Okay? Do not take a purse or bag or sandal, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, say first, peace to this house. Okay. He said, if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Okay. So these people, when they travel, you know, they are not speaking uselessly, idly to people on the road. Right? Why? They have a particular mission. They have to go to a particular town, to a particular village, you know, where Jesus Christ will eventually go to. And they would start the ministry. Okay, and he would, they would be talking to people, you know, giving them blessings of peace. You know, if they are welcome into the house, okay, the peace rests with the house. He said, if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eat and drink whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house house. So if you find somebody who is accepting or welcoming the message, stay with them. Okay? That your peace and your blessing may be with them. Eh, don't move around from place to place or from house to house, he said. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is said before you. Okay? Don't complain about the food. Right? Don't complain about the, uh, uh, the dwelling place or the beddings. Whatever is said before you, okay, welcome it. And eat whatever is before you. Heal the sick who are in there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. So when they go there, they start the work. Even before the arrival of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So they would start doing the preparation, the work. Continue. But when you enter a town and are not welcome, go into its street and say, they enter a town. Okay? And you're not welcome. They don't like you. you know, they chase you out. What do you do? Even the dust of your town that stick to your feet, we wipe off against you. you know? Yet, be sure of this. The kingdom of God is near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of Sodom than for that particular town. So why is that? Why is that? When they go to a town, and the town, they reject them, why would that town be worse than Sodom when God destroyed the city of Sodom? And of course, the sister city, Gomorrah. Why? Why? Because these people, they have seen the miracles performed by Christ and, the, and His disciples. And they rejected, you know, the Spirit of God. Say, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Beth, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performing, performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago sitting uh, in sackcloth and ashes. So in those two cities, the city of Tyre, the city of Sidon, you know, even Sodom and Gomorrah, when they see the miracles of God, they would have repented. But instead, if they reject, you know, they'll be in trouble with God because they have rejected the Spirit of God. Continue. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be lifted up to the skies. No one will go down to the depths. Okay. He who listens to you listens to me. He said, hey, when you go out and you preach the gospel, when they listen to your preaching, you are listening to mine or to Jesus. Because they represented, the disciples represented 
Christ and they have the Spirit of God with them. He said, he who rejects you, he told the disciples, rejects me. But he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. So, if they reject the disciples, they are rejecting Jesus. If they reject Jesus, they are rejecting the Father. Because the Father sent Christ, and the Christ sent out his disciples. And this is basically one spirit at work. The spirit of God at work. So the 20, no, the 20, the 72 returned with joy and said, wow, Lord, wow. Even the demons, Galen, submit to us in your name. Because they are, they were able to heal. They have the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, even the demons, those Demon possessed. They're able to drive out the demons. They're able to heal them. They're able to, to, to be cleansed, he said. Even the demons obey. Okay? And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay. Continue. He said, I have authority. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to become to overcome all the power of the of the enemy nothing will harm you. Okay, so this is basically the authority and the power given to the apostle. Okay? So, however, do not rejoice that the spirit submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. I love, I love this particular verse. Okay? Yes, they can perform miracles. They can drive out demons. They can heal the sick. Raise the dead. But these are nothing. Uh, you are happy with this one? Yes. These are nothing. He said, Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Fascinating. So, we have a work to be done. So, and when we do this work properly, rightly, you know, there should be this inner joy in us. Okay? What is this inner joy? Is that we are getting nothing, no? Nakaka drive out tayo ng demons. The sick, they get well. Okay? When I pray over them, they get so, you know, they, they recover. That's not good. That's, that's okay, but you should rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Verse 21. He said, At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, He said, I praise Father, I praise you, Father, Lord of all heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Okay. So, so what is this all about? Okay. Though the disciples, the twelve and the seventy-two, they went out with power, you know, and with miracles, accompanied by the preaching of the kingdom of God. Actually, not everyone will accept the message. Not every single one. Right? And I can make a guess. Not all those who were healed you know, may actually be eventually converted. Okay. We're continue, verse 22. He said, All things have been committed to me by my Father. Uh, Jesus said that all the things have been given to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son. 
and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. This is for me also very interesting. Because we know that all the power resides in the Father, and the Father gave authority to the Son, and the Son gives authority to the Apostle. So everything goes back to the Father. And in verse, next verse, Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are your eyes that see what you see. Yeah. We have a special message. And that special message is a good news. And that good news is the good news of the kingdom of God. Verse 34. He said, For I tell you that many prophets, mga propeta, and kings, mga hari, wanted to see what you see. And that is, of course, the gospel. But did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Okay. So, so what do we have here? So what we have here is that Jesus came with a message. And that message is the kingdom of God. You know, and for this message to be accepted and to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, it has to be accompanied with power, with miracles, you know, of healing. And the apostles go out, the disciples go out in pairs. They were given this particular power. And they preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay. And we know for a fact that this message, though powerful, although wonderful, yeah, will not be accepted by everyone. Right? If this message is accepted by everyone, then all of uh, all, everyone in the world would have been a Christian. Right? That all. You know, if it is accepted by everyone, then Jesus Christ would not have been crucified. Right? See? So, so the question is, does that deter us? Let's say we may talk to a hundred people. You know, out of the hundred people, maybe zero initially will come and accept the truth, uh, come fellowship with us. Right? Or you may talk to a thousand people. Or 10,000 people. You know, maybe talking to a thousand, maybe talk, you talk to a thousand people, one might be interested. Right? So what do we do with that? Should we be so discouraged? Oh, you know, see walang resulta. You know, it's not effective. So what do we do? Okay. So Jesus Christ gave the apostles a parable. And this parable is written in Matthew chapter 13. Okay. I want you to remember this parable, Matthew chapter 13. This is the parable of the sower. This part of the sower has been preached, siguro, you know, 100 million times, okay, by all the churches. This parable of the sower, okay. Now, you must remember this is Matthew 13. So if you will read the Gospel of Matthew sequentially, no. what would have happened here? Because in chapter 9, Jesus Christ sent out the 12 to perform miracles and drive out demons. Okay? And in chapter 10, He sent out the 72. Right? So this event happened, if you read it sequentially, after they have sent out the disciples to do the work. Okay. So after it, after. So that's, that's the by my friend when you read this one. So then Jesus Christ spoke of this parable. He said, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat on the lake. So you must remember that disciples were there. They were with him during this event. 
Okay? They went out, they could perform miracles, they healed the sick, drive out demons, they came back so happy, you know, even demons obey me, obey us, you know, able to drive them out. They came out rejoicing. Okay, and Jesus Christ said, no, don't rejoice at that, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And a few days after, this event occurred. Okay, so that's the mind frame, that's the mind frame. He said, verse 2, it says, such large crowd gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Because, you know, you're addressing a huge crowd, so you want to create some distance so that they will be able to see you know, Jesus, so Jesus got in the boat, you know, went out of the shore for a while, so that he can have a, you know, a, a, a perspective of the number of people out there. And at the same time, the people can see him. He won't be covered in the crowd. So people will be able to see him. And in verse 3, so then he told them many things in parables, saying, he said, a farmer went out to sow his seed. Okay? And he, as he was scattering the seed, some fell on patch, pat, and the bird came and ate it up. And some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because there were no roots. Okay? Others fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still others fell, uh, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. So he who has an ear, let him hear. Okay. So ito yung parable na sinabi niya. Okay. There's a hundred and one ways to interpret this. Okay, <laughs> this one. But, verse 10, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He said, Hindi namin naintindihan yan. We don't know what's the meaning of the parable. So, bakit? Why? Then Jesus replied, The knowledge of the kingdom, secrets of the kingdom of heaven, has been given to you. You. But not to them. This parable is actually for you. It's not for them. Okay? It is for you. Okay? He said. More importantly for you. Whoever has will be given more and he will have an abundance. He who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. He said, This is why I speak to them in parables. Those seeing, they do not understand. Those hearing, they do not hear or understand. He said, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be seeing, but never perceiving. Okay. Except for... This people's heart has become callous. Uh, they hardly hear with their ears and they have actually closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn. And I would heal them. Isn't this what Jesus wanted? That everyone who hears, they see. Uh, everyone who sees, they understand, hears. They are converted. You know, and that their hearts are turned. Isn't this what... Jesus wanted. The Havan here is saying, you know, it's not going to happen. Continue. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. It's a unique message. It's not for everyone. Okay? Continue. He said, For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear him. He said, listen to what the parable of the sower means. Ito para sa iyo yan. Okay? O sa akin yan. Okay? Because if you tell this story, the parable of the sower to an unbeliever, 
they will just mock at you. Okay, to them this is meaningless. But to us, who is doing God's work, this means something to us. Okay, so what is the meaning of this to us? <laughs> okay, he says, listen to what the parable means. He said, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom of God, okay, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. Okay. The question, the key here is that we go out as the sower of the seed, as the disciples of Christ. We go out and we sow the good seed. Okay. That's our job. Trabaho po natin yan as disciples of Christ. That is the job of the sower. Okay? That's our job. We saw. Yeah, some will fall on the path. Okay? You don't know. You know, when you talk to someone, you actually do not know whether he is a path, a rock, you know, or a fertile soil. You don't know. Okay? That's our job. Just to saw. Right? He said, well, sometimes when you go out and sow, it falls on the path. Right? <clears throat> the one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is a man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Okay. I remember one time when I went out in the province. Di ba yung mga rice fields, merong silang path? Okay. It, ito yung sinasabi niya. Yung... Ito yung path, hindi yung highway. Ha? This is the rice field, and then these are the paths. You know, yung mga, what, what do you call it in Tagalog? Ha? Yeah, yeah, yung may konting, uh, yeah, yeah. So those are the paths. And all the, along the paths, the, all the sides of the path, those are the rocky ones. Di ba? Yung mga, yung mga bato-bato nasa, nasa gilid doon, di ba? So these are the rocky paths. You see? So, he who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is a man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he had no roots, kasi, rock lang yun, di ba? He lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, well, he quickly falls away. Quick question. Okay, and then the question comes later. Let me continue. The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the weariness of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth actually choke it and make it unfruitful in the die. Okay, now question. We know that when we go out and we do the work, we go out to preach, many of our labor Many of the seeds that we sow will fall on the path. Many will fall on the rocky places. And many will be chalked up. Question. Does that prevent us from doing God's work? Is that how we measure? Okay. The results. <laughs> Or effectiveness. Ay? Wala pa lang tayong nakukuha. Is this a reason for discouragement? Or reason for preventing us to go out and work? Okay. Jesus said, The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the disciples of this world choke it. Making it unfruitful. Continue. But the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word of God and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times of what was sown. Some, maybe little, will fall on fertile grounds. Okay? That's what we focus on. 
we, our message will fall on some fertile grounds. You know, vast majority will be on the path, rocky places, you know, or in bushes and thorns. But some will fall on good soil, on fertile grounds. Okay, so this is for me, okay, the way to look at it is a message for us. People in the world, they don't care about this, right? They don't know whether they are the soil, fertile soil, the path, the rock, or, you know, the, 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 the thorns. They don't care. But for us, it is, for me, an encouragement, Right? Here is that if we are the sower, okay, our job is to sow the seed. It's a complaint about the ground, okay? Just sow the seed. And that is our job and there is us, our responsibility. Jesus Christ started this work, okay? And this work will continue. Okay, until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns. This work continues. It continues only when there are laborers. Okay? okay. We know that a time will come that it is impossible to preach the gospel. It's prophesied. Okay? It will come a time. But while it is still daylight, daytime, then we ought to preach this gospel. Okay? And in John chapter 9, starting from verse 1 to verse 5, and this is what Jesus Christ told the apostles. Okay? Of course, this one he also told the apostles and the disciples. <clears throat> he said, As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. The disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, his father or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So he was born blind for a particular purpose. Okay? And the purpose was to display the miracles of God. And in verse 4, he said, As long as it is still day, why is it called day? Because there is light. When there is light, you can see. See? But this man born blind has been in darkness all his life. Cannot comprehend light. Won't be able to see things. He said, As long as it is day, was there still light, we must do the work of him who sent me. So there's a work. What is the light? Night is coming. It's a prophecy. Okay? When no one can work. There will come a time that it will be difficult for people to preach. Okay? About God and his righteousness. Okay? Maybe one of these days I'll talk about that. He said, a night is coming that no one can preach. So, while I am in the world, I am the light he said, of the world. So, when Jesus is no longer in the world and he has ascended to heaven, okay, does it mean there is no more light in the world? It doesn't mean the light, right? Because Jesus Christ said, you are the light of the world. Who are these you? Of course, these are God's people. So we are the light. We carry on the light of Christ to the world. Okay. Now the burden of the work, I call it burden because it's work, <laughs> falls upon God's people. Who are God's people? Hey guys. You're not volunteers. You're chosen <laughs> to do this work. Okay. You, us, are 
the workers. Okay? Tayo ito. The burden of the work of God falls on God's people today and in the future, in all ages. It's God's people doing God's work. Okay? Today, as I said, it falls upon okay, us, you guys out there. God's work needs workers. The field needs laborers. Okay? The harvest needs workers. Okay? We know the Great Commission, which is to preach the gospel, 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 gospel unto the ends of the earth, right? So, how is it, right? I know. We should do internet, digital preaching, right? Or uh, we do mass media, we do magazine, we do radio, you know? Let the people at the head office or headquarters or, you know, the church office, they do the work. Me? I pay the my tithe and I pray. My job is to pay and pray. Okay. The teaching, the work, the ministry, ah, bahala na mga tao dyan. You know, let the television program, let the magazine program, let the internet program, let the YouTube program, let all of those program program do the work. Okay. Romans chapter 10 gives us a different perspective to this one. Uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, starting from il- verse 11, I think it should give us a different perspective. See how the scripture says, Anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. Okay? Trust in who? Trust in God and in Christ. For there is no difference between a Jew and a Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly bless all who call on Him. See? Say, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When you say call on the name, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Say to the no, no, no. When you say you call on the name of the Lord, means that you belong to to him and you follow his ways you live your life according to him you know you live a holy life as our heavenly father and our lord savior jesus christ is holy we live a holy life because they are holy everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved you know when you say call on the name is that what you know he is of christ Okay, but if you do not live the way of a Christian, Christian is of Christ, then you are blaspheming God. Okay, because hey, ako Christiano ako pero para para kalakohan pa lang ginagawa natin, di ba? So we are in short blaspheming the name of Christ. But if we are called by the name of the Lord, that means we are God's people, right? This is talking about God's people. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 4. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? Oh nga, di ba? How can they believe in the one of whom that they have not heard? Oh nga, di ba? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Right? Next verse. And how can they preach unless that they are Sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Okay, continue. Yeah. But not all the Israelites accept the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has delivered our message. Verse 17. So consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard. Through the word of Christ. Someone has to preach the gospel. Then we ask, Sino kaya ito? Sino kaya yan? Who is this person to preach? Ah, mga taga 
headquarters, yung mga taga-office. Okay, anyway, may TV, may naman TV program na tayo, radio program, news program, you know, whatever program, down there. Okay. But this one, you know, like what Jesus Christ did, you know, was to send out the deposit, the, the disciples for them to do the work. Okay? There is empowerment. There is this Christian empowerment. Because all of us who are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Okay? So we are God's people and collectively as one church, individually as a Christian, we do God's work. Okay? We have to get ourselves involved. This is not the work of the office. Meron tayong individual responsibility. We have work to do. Okay. Now the challenge is what do we do? Okay. Ano dapat natin gawin? Okay. I think the church, we have the church program. You know, but as a congregation here in Malolos, okay, what do we do here? Okay. For us, I think that is a responsibility. Okay. Uh, in Manila, was it in Manila? Yeah, in Manila, I talk about the seven churches. Okay. Each church has a peculiarity. Okay? So, you have to understand our peculiarity here in Palolos. Okay? Have we done our best? Okay? Or what other things can we do? Okay? So, when you survey the landscape, okay, I believe that personal evangelism is very important. Ito. We don't knock on doors like the Mormons because the Mormons do exactly yung Matthew 10. Eh. Yung siya sabi na they go out in pairs, di ba? Yung mga Mormons, mga uh, Latter-day Saints, di ba? They go out in pairs, they knock on doors. You know, if you don't accept them, eh. I don't know whether they do this, uh, you know, uh, dusting of the dirt, okay? Yeah. But actually they do that, right? Uh, and we can not say that they are not successful. You know, apparently they are able to convert, convert some people. You know, in spite of their strange, uh, you know, uh, teaching. Okay, and if they can do that with the strange teaching, okay, why can we not do that with the truth? Right. So I'm not telling you to go and knock on doors. Okay. But I'm saying this that there might be some other ways of doing personal evangelism. Okay. As we have said earlier, we are the light of the world. We are the ambassadors for Christ. So we should carry Christ in our lives. Okay? When we interact with the world, we interact with people, friends, neighbors, you know, let your light shine. Okay? And we can be an active worker in the work. Just like all the disciples. They were trained to do this. Okay, and that's why the church grew. You know? Sharing the truth is just sowing a seed. Sharing the truth is just like sharing or sowing a seed. You don't know whether it is the path, where is the rocky, uh, 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 you know, the rocky rocks or uh, rocky sand or the thorn bushes. Or it is a fertile land. You won't actually know. You know, sometimes people will come to church, you know, in uh, my experience, they will come to church and, we, and I would tell myself when I was younger, <laughs> okay, when people come to church, I would assess them and say, talk to them for a while and say, uh, I don't think this one will be, God will make it. Yeah, and to my surprise, they got converted. And there are some people who come to church that say, okay, ito, may pakasa ito. Okay? He's receptive to the truth. Apparently, they fall away. We don't know it. 
Okay? Uh, only God knows, right? As far as, as, as we are concerned, I've learned this the hard way, sort of. You know, is that we don't do judgment. We just saw the seeds. We just saw the seeds. Okay? And I believe that this sharing, personal sharing, sowing the seed, you know, it's important. Sometimes I say, I will not share the gospel with this guy because I don't think that this guy is fertile. Okay? Sang ilang panahon ko rito. Sometimes we do that, right? And lo and behold, you're wrong. You know, maybe they're the one that is the more receptive, you know, to the truth. Okay? And please don't mind the success rate. <laughs> I know. I've talked already to 20 people and I, I cannot even convert one. I'm discouraged. Nah. <laughs> Don't find a success rate. Just focus on the work. Work. So, keep on sewing. Personal evangelism. Okay. Okay. And this is a big range. Okay. So, what do you do? You know. So, what I'm proposing is, you know, tie. What can we do? Here, sa Malolos, I think we grew because of uh, yung home study natin, no? uh, Mang Miguel, right? You know, we started very few, you know, and we started conducting Bible study in the uh, village of, uh, 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 you know, uh, where Mang Miguel is staying. And it, and it started there, do you Yeah, so it started, at one time we were going from one, you know, one village to another, okay, uh, and I think, you know, that that might be a good model, you know, but over the years we somehow didn't do that anymore, okay, so maybe we you want to revisit that, you know, for us here in Malolo, it has been a proven, uh, you know, success uh, uh, form- formula. So maybe we should continue. We should think maybe to continue doing that. Okay. Um, which I think a lot of other churches are doing, you know, and I are quite quite successful. The uh, home studies, mga Bible study at home, right? Yeah. Uh, and third is that uh, you know uh, we can invite them to Bible studies. I think our Bible study is a good venue. Eh? Okay? Uh, and if you invite people uh, to the Bible study, okay, especially we know the topic two, but a week or two weeks before, like this coming March, we'll be talking about God the Father. Yeah. A lot of people know about Jesus Christ. Grab it. Everybody knows Jesus Christ, right? When you go to Catholic, Protestant, you know, all of this, even INC. Okay, Iglesia ni Cristo, uh, you talk to, uh, you know, si, you know, si Eli Soriano. Everyone knows about Jesus Christ. Okay? But when you talk about God the Father, whoop, medyo, nawala na. Bakit? Naka-Trinity na. Okay? But once you go into a Trinity, it's so difficult to understand John 3.16, eh? God so loved the world that He sent His one and only begotten Son. Okay. Medyo may problema na. Oh, by the way, when you pray, pray to not Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven. Okay. So who is this Father in heaven? And Jesus Christ prayed three times to the Father. Okay. In tears and sweat. Sweat and tears. Okay? Who is this being? And people don't know. But Jesus called him the true God. You know? And once you know him, that is what eternal life is all about. Okay? And we talk about that in the next Bible study. Please invite our friends. You know, it's a real eye opener. Okay. And when people come and they say, wow, 
Okay? Mukhang iba itong mensahe na ito, ah. You know, then you have opportunity to open up conversations. You know, if they have questions, they can ask, right? So let's make it an effort, you know, for us to invite friends to the Bible study. Okay? Eh, kung hindi ka siya isang van, pwede tayong magtatlong van, di ba? Okay. Fourth item, you know, I listed a few here, you know, is to bring people here to church, you know, like uh, Brian, you know, uh, welcome, okay, and, you know, to come in fellowship with us, you know, and, you know, to somehow uh, get acquainted with the gospel, okay, uh, and it's a good thing, you know, uh, you know, if uh, at least we make friends, you know, whether they come to church or not, actually, you know, at least we make friends, and of course it was it's our hope that eventually they come, you know, to the truth. Okay, and when they are in church or in the Bible study, we have a part as well. Okay, pag dumating sa Bible study, they say it's a shangri-la. Okay, eh, dapat cordial naman tayo, di ba? Dapat warm naman tayo. Okay, uh, so we should be able to uh, fellowship uh, with all the visitors and guests. Who come because that is us exposing ourselves, right? You know, and uh, sharing our time. So we must exhibit our personal examples, you know, warmth, you know, and fellowship uh, with them. Okay. So There's a work to be done, okay, uh, for the entire church in the Philippines. Actually, globally, <laughs> there's need for the church, you know, to do the work even harder. And so it's that, you know, tayo naman sa Pilipinas, I think we are doing uh, a little bit of share in preaching of the gospel, but I think we can still do much, much more, okay. And as I said, please don't worry about the results. You know, don't look at the effectivity, whether it's effective or not. Okay? As in the uh, parable of the sower, okay, many, many will reject the message. You know, for one reason or the other. No interest. Okay? The cares of this world. Okay? They might turn away uh, from the message. But some, though a small portion, will receive it with gladness. Yung those small portion, those will receive the message with gladness. Those are the people that we, tar- that we target. Not that we target, we don't target them, you know, because we really don't even know them. But those are the people that we do our work. Okay. We don't know who they are. We just saw the seed. Okay. Our job is not to prejudge the effectivity of our work. You know? Our responsibility, our task, our job, our work is to deliver the message, to share the message of the gospel of the kingdom of God. As Paul said, you know, if I can paraphrase it, we water the plant, right? God gives it the increase. Okay, we just do our work. Now let's go back to John chapter 14. This is where we start. This is where we start, so this is... uh, uh, where we close. John 14, in verse 12. This time we will read until verse 14. John 14, in verse 12, he said, So I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Okay. It's all for the faithful. If we are the believers of Christ, then we are Christ's disciples. And as disciples of Christ, we will do what Christ 
did, or is still doing until today. He will do even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father. And in verse 13, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring, bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is with regards to the preaching of the gospel. This is just the, some frivolous asking of anything. This is about God's work. Okay, if we do God's work, and if we come and pray to God for the empowerment of the gospel, it will be granted to us. Physically, individually, and collectively. Okay? And finally, in John self chapter 17. Okay? So if we are true believers, and we call ourselves disciples of Christ, Okay, we do the work of Christ, right? And we can seek empowerment from God the Father. That's what it is said here. Okay? As I said earlier, is that these events took place at the Last Supper. John 14 is the beginning of the supper, of the night. And John 17 is towards the end of the supper. So after supper, Jesus Christ said a prayer and they left for the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus Christ was betrayed. And in the prayer, Jesus says something really amazing. And I think that this prayer, we know that this prayer is for us, but I believe that this prayer is for the workers. Okay? the true disciples of Christ. Verse 20. John 17 and verse 20. This prayer is for all the believers. You know, and this verse 20 is particularly interesting. He said, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Okay. So he's talking about, Hey, please protect them. Please bless them. That they may be one as we are one. Jesus prayed to the Father. He's not talking about the 12 disciples. He's not talking about the 500 disciples. The 12 apostles and the, or the, the, the 500 or so apostles during those times. Or the few thousand believers during the time of Jesus Christ. He said here that my prayer is not for them alone. For who? Not only for the 12. I pray also for those who believe in me. Through their message. This is for us. Because we also believe through their message. As they preach to us. Right? 21. That all of them may be one. As the apostles and the first century Christians. And us today, you know, may be one. Father. Just as you are in me, Jesus Christ said, and I am in you. There is this unity, okay, of will, of purpose, okay, of determination and action. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Okay, Jesus Christ came with a message. God the Father sent him. Okay, and Jesus Christ is sending us. Okay, so when they believe the message of our message, they believe the message of Christ, they now believe the message of God the Father. That's what it is. So there is this unity, oneness of purpose, not, not in identity, but in purpose, in will. Okay? And there's a singularity of message. That is about the kingdom of God. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me. That they may be one as we are one. 
23. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity. To let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved. This is talking about the work, the blessing of the work. Okay. Then, during the time of the apostles, now, during our time, and yes, even into the future, until the day of the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? So if you're looking for a title for this message, it is The Work Continues. So with that, uh, happy Sabbath to everyone.